into the slides. Good morning and welcome to the ministry Church of Christ where spirits are fed, souls are saved, and the body is at work for the kingdom of God. Uh, we are glad that you are able to join us in our worship to our almighty and powerful God. On this, uh, the first Sunday in July of 2020, July the 5th, uh, we are starting a new value for this month, uh, a new self-image. I'm excited to share this information with you. Uh, we're going to say more about this uh, shortly, but we're going to talk this month about uh, the, the ability to see yourself as God sees you, understanding that I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in this body. This is directly connected to the God's Love Bank uh, curriculum. Uh, we encourage you to tune in to God's Love Bank on uh, throughout the week, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Central Time, where Dr. Roach will be talking about uh, this particular core value of Jesus. But this morning, as we are getting ready to uh, worship our God, we want you to have an opportunity to ask for prayer, uh, to, um, to ask for prayer, to, to place your membership, to let us know that you want to be baptized, uh, however we can minister to you. So there's some information that's on the screen now. I encourage you to jot that down, take a picture of your screen. Uh, go ahead and send us your prayer request. Uh, maybe during the sermon, uh, there's going to, God will prick your heart in some shape, form, or fashion that you feel the need to respond. Uh, then we want you to do that uh, as well. Uh, if you are on Facebook Live, uh, we have someone monitoring the feed. So if you happen to have a prayer request that you want to input there, uh, we will see that. And at the appropriate time, uh, we'll make mention of that. But listen, uh, it's worship time. So now, join us as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am. Yes, and we will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am? Yes, sing hallelujah to the King of Kings. Sing hallelujah to the Lamb. Sing hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Who is the great I am? Yes, and we will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. Yes, we will glorify the Lord of Lords. Who is the great Good morning. Good morning. As we prepare to worship God in spirit and in truth this morning, we want to encourage you to be still and trust God. To be still and know God. Relax in the spirit for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. We want to encourage you to place yourself and all of your affairs in his care and be still. We believe that worship is a time to pay homage to the almighty and loving God. It is a time to forget about ourselves and to magnify the Lord and worship him. 
We do not come today looking for something for ourselves. We come to give adoration, praise, honor, glory, majesty, strength, and power to God. Amen. Amen. And let it be so. We're going to start off this morning by singing, Thank You, Lord. God has been so good to us, and so we're going to start singing, Thank You, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. They didn't. We just want to thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, and I just want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, say thank, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I can't help but thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, I just want to thank, oh, thank you, Lord, because you've been so good and you've been, been so, been so good, oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, you've been, been so, been so good. I know you have, you've been, been so, been so good to me. Yes, you have, Lord, and I just want to Oh, thank you, Lord, because you made a way and you made. Oh, Lord. Oh, you made a way for me. I know you did. Made, made a, made a way. Say, I just want to pray. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, with a grateful heart, I say, Thank, thank you, thank you, Lord, for how you brought me through, Lord. I thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. For bringing me through, I thank, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Oh, I just want to thank. Oh, thank you, Lord. Sing, I just want to thank you. Say, I just want to thank. Oh, I, oh, my words are not enough, but I want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, so with a grateful heart, I say, I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. If anybody has a reason to sing, somebody say, we do. Let's sing that. If anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Tell somebody that we do. Oh, my Lord, if anybody has has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Oh, I know that we do. Come on and praise the Lord. 
Yes, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, a reason to sing if anybody has a reason. A reason to sing. I know we do. Tell somebody that we do. Oh, my Lord, if anybody has, has a reason to sing. I know we do, yes, we do. Come on and praise the Lord. Yes, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, a reason to pray if anybody. Oh, yes, a reason to pray, Lord, we do. Tell somebody that we do. Oh, my Lord, if anybody has, has a reason, a reason to pray, I know we do. Tell somebody that, that we do. Lord, let's praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Yes, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, a reason to smile if anybody has, has a reason. Oh, yeah, to smile we do. God has been good to us. So I'm going to smile if anybody has, has a reason, a reason to smile. I know we do. Well, I know that we do come on and praise the lord yes come on and praise the lord oh come on and praise the lord yes come on and praise the lord oh come on and praise the lord yes come on and praise the lord did you really come to praise the lord oh everybody praise the lord are able to can you please stand for opening prayer let's go to the lord in prayer father you are holy righteous we just love you father we come together today father to worship you to give you thanks father to express our love to you father to keep you first and foremost at this time father we just uh come together as a body, yeah. as Christians, to worship you, to praise you, Father, to keep you in our hearts, to ask forgiveness, yeah. to realize our iniquities, Father, our failures, yeah. but to rejoice, Father, because we have you. Yeah. We have you to pray to, to intervene in our lives, Father, to answer our prayers, someone to pray to, Father. We just love you and thank you and adore you for all those wonderful things. You sent your son, Father, to redeem us, Father, and for that we will always be grateful. We thank you for this church, Father, for the ministry. We thank you for Dr. Tony Roach and his vision, Father. And we thank you for Brother Nickerson. We ask for a blessing on Brother Nickerson as our evangelist, as he will bring the word to us here momentarily, Father. We are asking, Father, that you guide us, continue to keep us kingdom-minded, keep us focused on opportunities, not obstacles, Father. Thank you for the messages, Father, that we get through training, Father, that say we are a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body, Father. We just love you and adore you for those things, those things that get us through life, Father. We just thank you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Morning, church. Morning. We have been to the street uh, 
believe that we are the entrepreneurs of the bank of our soul. And we invest in the bank of our soul with every word, thought, feeling, action, and deed that we make in our lives. We try to make deposits in the bank of our soul like Jesus did. And we do that by studying 15 core values that Jesus exercised while he was on this earth. The core value for this month in our curriculum is new self image. And if you would say it with me, a new self image, the image that I am threefold being, which functions and operates as God's love bank. My spirit is in charge of my new self. My body is in charge of my old self and my soul is the bank itself. That is the strong, that which is the stronger investor and wiser investor will take control of the gift in the bank of my soul. We also begin teaching our children at the earliest age possible in this church and we treat our children not as just children, but little people. And we teach them these core values in a way that is age appropriate. All of you children that are 12 and under stand with your parents or those that are watching you right now and repeat the core value for the child. New self image. I will see myself as God sees me. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. Amen. I'm gonna trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children. Oh, you know that I'll join him in another land where tears for the sorrows can be found. And I'll receive a mansion. Come on, brothers. Well, I'm talking about a mansion. I want a brand new mansion, a robe, rope and crown and glory there. Nothing but peace and love will always about the Lord. Just let me be among all the saints in your throne. Surrounded by Lord, please preserve a mansion. I want a robe, a robe and crown. Well, the weather there is always fair. There is sun shine day and night. Well, the no cold and no rain will fall there. For the sun shines ever bright. I won't need no heavy garments. I'll just wrap my robe around. Well, when I receive, oh, I'm going on to my robe. Well, I'm talking about a mansion. I want a brand new mansion, robe, robe, and crown in glory there. Oh, peace, love with long ways abound. Lord, just let me be among all the same to your, your throne surround, Lord. Lord, please preserve a mansion. I want a robe, robe and crown. Well, and my head is bowed and bloody now from the work that I try to do. Oh, but one day I'll be rewarded. Oh, with a crown, brand new. I'm gonna wear a smile so bright for there'll be no cause for a frown when I win that receive a mansion I want a robe robe yes I'm talking about a mansion I want a brand new mansion robe robe and crown in glory there peace and love with all the ways I found Lord, just to let me be, oh, among all the saints to your, 
your throne surround. Oh Lord, please preserve my mansion. I want to roll over that crown. You know, when we get to heaven, we're going to sit around the throne and praise him all day. And that's why, thinking about that, I love to praise him. Y'all going to help me? I love to praise him. 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 Well, I love to praise his holy name. Well, I love to praise. I love to praise him today. I love to praise him. Lord. Well, I love to praise him. Yes. Well, I love to praise him. Yes, I do. To praise his holy name. Tell me, has it been your rod, Lord? My rock, my, my rock, my sword, he is a will. Oh, my God, in the middle of the world. And I'm so sure that you never, well, he told me he won't ever let me down. He's just a child. I can't find my way, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, sing I love. Well, come and sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, sing I. Hey, and will you help me sing and say, yeah. Sing it like you love him, sing I. Sing it like you need him, sing I. And I can't take a one step without you, Lord. Hey, I can't make it one day without you, Lord. Hey, I love to praise His holy name. I love to praise Him. His, his holy name. Uh, God is worthy of our praise. Uh, not only does he desire our praise and worship, he deserves our praise and worship. 
And I am glad to be uh, among those who believe in uh, worshiping and praising our God. Uh, I know uh, even in the midst of this pandemic, uh, people on this Sunday morning uh, are out doing various things or, or some people are just uh, sleeping in. Uh, but I'm glad that you uh, understand the importance of investing in your soul uh, where you have logged on. Some of you have uh, gotten up and uh, gotten dressed even at home. Even at home, uh, you've gotten dressed and ready to serve your God, to, to praise your God, to worship your God. And so I say, God bless you. And may God's favor be upon you uh, for you investing in your own spiritual growth and development the way that you are. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to take a bit of a different approach to uh, this preaching uh, portion of our service. Um, I might do something that my wife don't like. It's called didactic preaching, uh, but uh, she might not like it, but it's good anyhow. Um, I want to I encourage you to turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier that this month we are delving into uh, a core value of Jesus that has to do with new self-image, making sure that we see ourselves the way God sees us, understanding that we are spirits, we have a soul, we live in a body, the spirit is the real me, my soul is my personality, and my body is just a house that my spirit uh, and soul lives in. Um, each and every one of us in the world are threefold spiritual beings. Uh, what's different about uh, you and I, I hope, is that we are now uh, have fellowship and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And we are members of the kingdom of God. Um, did I give you time to find Acts chapter two? Uh, Acts chapter two, starting with verse number one, and it is our custom to stand to reverence the reading of God's word. Acts chapter two, and uh, this is kind of selfish, but for those who are in the house, if you'll read aloud with me, because I haven't had, I haven't heard y'all read in a long time. I'm not sure you haven't forgotten how. Acts chapter two, starting verse one, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because that everyone heard them speak in its own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, look, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Verse 12, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Let us pray together. Again, dear Father, we pause to recognize you as the almighty and powerful God. We are thankful for the power that is in your word. We ask you, dear God, to be with us now as we enter into this preaching portion of the service. Pray that uh, those who are under the sound of my voice will have ears to hear, uh, eyes to see, and an open and honest heart to receive your engrafted word. For we realize it is both able to purify and save our souls. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Bless us now. This we pray in Jesus' name. 
All who agree with the prayer, let them say amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Um, in Acts chapter 2, we have um, a situation that's happening that has never happened before. The church is beginning right here in Acts chapter 2. What Jesus prophesied and spoke about in Matthew 16 when he says upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it he said in verse 19 of Matthew 16 and I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and here in Acts chapter 2 uh, we see that prophecy coming to pass where uh, God's people Peter and the rest of the apostles are beginning to preach this first gospel message. And the Bible tells us that uh, there are a plethora of people uh, coming together. And in verse 12, things were happening in such a fashion that the people began to ask the question, what does this mean? And I wanna preach this morning from that, from that question that we find in, in verse 12, what does this mean? Uh, in the book, we have people who are coming uh, all from all uh, parts and cities of the world. Uh, they're coming from uh, Parthia, they're coming from Elam, they're coming from Pontus, they're coming from Asia. All across the world, the church is starting and the people are coming. Um, my question, as I began to look at this text, uh, and I've been here many times before, but I started wondering, what do these people look like? I know that Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia, uh, but when the church first started, what did the church look like? And I think this is relevant for the time in which we are living in. Uh, not just this COVID-19 pandemic, but this racial division, this racial unrest that has that's really been with us for not since not since George Floyd died, uh, uh, not not since uh, not since Breonna Taylor, uh, not not since Tamir Rice, uh, not since Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, but at the very beginning of this country, uh, over 400 years ago, uh, we've been dealing with this, and I know people like to think that. Uh, it's over with now because we had a black president in the United States of America, uh, but we see quite clearly that it's not over with. But what troubles me more than the fact that this racial tension is happening in our society is that it exists in our churches. Uh, many of us are members of a church where you are proud that even though you live in a city that's diverse culturally, you only worship with people who look like you. We, 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 are, in a, we are in a city called Abilene, Texas, where we have people who are, who are happy, who are, who, are, who are comfortable, who are content with a homogenized worship experience that I believe is antipodal to what we read about in God's word. What does this mean? Uh, these people in Acts 2 came from everywhere. Uh, and again, I asked the question, you know, what, what, do they, what do they look like? And I don't, we don't know for sure, but I, I do know they came from, from Parthia. I do know they came from Edom. And, and I'm sharing with you some depictions of what people from those parts of the world look like uh, in ancient times and biblical times in the first century. Uh, does that look like your congregation? Or is everybody the same? Um, at Mender Street, we are blessed. We are blessed to have a, a plethora of people who make up this congregation. And this is not new. Uh, it was sometime in the early 90s when a visiting minister, I believe it was uh, Brother Willie Tucker, who came and did a gospel meeting for us. And he went back and wrote an article called The Miracle at Mender Street. That miracle had to do with the, uh, the racial unity that existed within this congregation uh, in a city where that was kind of shunned. Uh, 
we've gotten better in Abilene, but there's still a long way to go. But at Mender Street, you know, we have white people and black people and Africans. We have, we have people from uh, uh, Philippines. We have Hispanic. They're, they're, they're from the Bahamas. They're from California. They're from Ohio. They're from, they're from Pleasant Grove. Yeah, uh, uh, no, no place like Pleasant Grove <laughs> for various reasons. Uh, we even have somebody here from Oak Cliff, but you know, we, we just accept everybody. We work, with, we work with who we can. <laughs> we work with who we can, whoever God sends our way. And if, if God can save a soul out of Oak Cliff, <laughs> he can save us all. <laughs> He can save us all. Um, we are, it, it's, it's interesting that all of these individuals, the Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites, all these individuals from Ohio, from California, from Illinois, from the Filipinos, from the Philipp, uh, from Philippines, from the Bahamas, uh, all these individuals had one thing in common. Uh, they had different jobs. They came from different social backgrounds, yet they had one thing in common. I'm talking about before they even got to Jerusalem, before they heard the gospel message, before they were baptized for the remission of their sins. Uh, they all had this one thing in common, and that is they're all threefold spiritual beings. All right. We're talking about seeing ourselves the way God sees us. All right. Um, Here's what we, here's the, 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 the rationale for God's love bank. Here is the, the, the foundation of our teaching here at the Ministry Church of Christ. This is the teaching. This is the core of the teaching that allows us to be a multicultural, multiracial, multi ethnic congregation right here at Mender Street. Uh, it, it, lets us, it lets us sit with white folks and black folks and and wealthy folks and people who's on welfare uh, because of this teaching. Uh, we understand that we are spirits. Uh, the real you, the real you is not the color of your skin. The real you is not, not associated with the, your political party of choice. Uh, the real you is spirit. The Bible says that God is the father of spirits. We are spirits. Uh, and each and every one of us, that, that, that's the real you. Now, once you understand that, it'll change the way you live your life. Uh, it ought to change the way you deal with your fellow human being. Right? Uh, we are spirits. And then we're, we also understand that, understand that we have a soul. I am a spirit. I have a soul. Listen, I have a soul to save or I have a soul to lose. Uh, my soul has to do with my beliefs, my, my values, my attitude. My soul has to do with my personality, right? It's, it's, it's who I am. Uh, I am a spirit. I have a soul. And then I live in a body, right? Uh, the body is the house that my spirit lives in. Now, these individuals, these Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, those who came from Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, those who came from Crete and Arabia, those from those strangers who had Rome, those Jews and those proselytes, they all were threefold spiritual beings. Uh, everyone who's a member of the ministry Church of Christ, no matter where they're from, they are threefold spiritual beings. Uh, no matter where you're from, no matter where you're tuning in from, you are a threefold spiritual being. Uh, I, I know we African Americans. I'm black and I'm proud. Got it. But listen, before I was black and I was proud, I was a spirit who had a soul who lived in the body. And, and, and what 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 is good about this is that. Uh, once we realize that, once we realize who the real person is, I can stop judging you. I can stop making decisions about you based on your outward appearance and start making decisions about you based on your inner man. No wonder the Bible will say over in 1 John chapter 4, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they be of God. 
Yeah, I don't just dismiss you because you got a, you, your, your house is white. Bible tells me to try the spirit. Uh, I don't just accept you because your house is black. Uh, the Bible says, try the spirit. Uh, and it just means something different now that we are in the kingdom of God. Now, what's interesting in this text, oh, there's, several, there's several things interesting in this text. What I would like to pull, point out is in Acts chapter 2, in verse 1, the Bible says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were, where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right? So they're filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues, and when the Holy Spirit showed up, people began to come together. When the Holy Spirit showed up, people from all walks of life became one. Um, it, is, it is, let me say, something is out of line when a disciple who does not recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life, uh, each and every one of us who are born again have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible teaches me and shows me in Acts 2.38 and, and other passages. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And where the presence of the Holy Spirit is, there ought to be unity and not division, right? Um, and where if, if a church or Christians have the Spirit of God, uh, something is wrong with the, a churchgoer who never acknowledges the Holy Spirit. Something is deficient in your discipleship if you can sing and shout and read Bible, but you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. A, a, a believer, a disciple without the Holy Spirit is like a car without gas. Uh, you look good, but you're not going anywhere. Uh, a disciple without the Holy Spirit is like a television with no remote control. Uh, you're on, but you can't be changed. Uh, a, a disciple without the Holy Spirit uh, is like uh, a fried chicken with no seasoning. <laughs> Nobody wants a second bite of you because the first was enough to let us know you, you were worth coming back for a second try. Uh, there are people, yea, churches, that are void of the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit is present, the gospel is proclaimed, lives are saved, souls are being changed. That's what happened in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit came in and the people went out. Uh, they began to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Listen, uh, they, they started out as 12, the disciples. Uh, you remember verse 14, the Bible says, but Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice. Uh, they, they started out with 12 members, but by the time Peter gets through preaching the gospel, and when you get down to verse 41, the Bible says, then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit is our equipper for evangelism. All right. uh, Holy Spirit-filled folk are excited about Jesus. Uh, you ought to be as excited about Jesus as you were about being able to go back to your favorite restaurant. Uh, you ought to be excited about Jesus as you are about voting. Uh, you ought to be excited about Jesus as you were about popping those illegal fireworks last night. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I saw some people. I ain't gonna, I'm calling no name because somebody, the police department might be watching. I don't call nobody's name. When, when the Holy Spirit is present, you are passionate about saving souls. I, I know you like to worship. You like to sing songs. You like to, you like to have a sanctified good time. But people who are, who are not on Zoom and not on Facebook Live right now, uh, and, 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 and uh, they need to know about Jesus. 
And the real evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just what happens online or in a, in a church gathering. It's about what we do in our daily lives. So question, what are you doing in your daily life? How homogenous is your daily life? How many of you are only communicating with people who look like you and believe like you and walk like you. And, and the work of the Holy Spirit uh, is to open the doors of the church to invite those people who you would rather not be associated with uh, in the world. And when the Holy Spirit shows up in our lives, when the Spirit of God is at work in a church, all of God's children are allowed to worship and serve God in this place. There were Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia. Uh, what does this mean? They asked the question, what does this mean? Listen, it means that the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit, dissolves our divisions. That's what happens when we enter into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit dissolves our divisions. The Holy Spirit takes the things that divide you from someone in the world and erases them in the kingdom. Homogeneity is not a sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's greatest presence is seen when people who are divided in the world have learned to worship and work together in the body of Christ. Let me, let me take you to the Bible. Turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. In Ephesians chapter two, um, someone have, I wanna start at verse 11. Uh, you, you see this on the screen. Let me, I can read it from here. The book says this, therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called a circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time, he says, remember this now, that there was a time you were without Christ. Uh, he, he's talking to Christian folks, right? He, he's talking to people who are privileged now to be in the kingdom of God. Uh, they're, they're, they're happy, everything's going well with them. But he says, remember, there was a time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. The Bible says there was a time where we were strangers from the promises of God, strangers from the covenant. Uh, we had no hope of eternal life. We had no hope of having all spiritual blessings. We had no hope of having prayers answered. We were strangers. We were without God. Um, we may have talked about God, but we were without God. We may, have been, we may have believed that he existed, but we were without God. The Bible says, but now, <laughs> I like that, but now in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's, that's some good news right there. Uh, but now, now that you're in Christ Jesus, if you're outside of Christ Jesus, there is no hope. You are without God. You are still a stranger. You do not have part of God's covenant. But those who are now in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 14. So, so the Bible tells us that we have been brought near to God through the blood of Christ, because we are now in Christ Jesus. Verse 14 says, for he himself is our peace, watch this, who has made both one. Hold it. Uh, in, in these biblical times, um, the writers generally spoke in binary terms. Uh, it's, it's us and them. It's Jews and Gentiles. It's Greeks and barbarians is free and slave. 
right? Uh, he says, so, so in biblical times, you can think of, think of society as, as the Jews and everybody else, right? Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, they were at odds with each other. So what has happened through Christ Jesus, uh, who understands that we are spirits, we have souls and live in this body, uh, not only are we reconciled to God, but we are now reconciled with one another. In the kingdom of God, because we understand we are spirits, we have souls, we live in this body, and we now serve and operate under the kingdom of God, under the banner of Jesus Christ, we have been made to be at peace with one another and one. That's why, that's why we can have a brother Hatler here praying to God. That's why uh, his wife, Sister Hatler, can be here serving God. That's why we can have a brother Rangel here. That's why we can have Jesusita uh, here, and we're praying for you, Sister Jesusita. Uh, that's why we can have uh, a, sister, a sister Savoy from the Philippines. Uh, that's why we can have a, a sister uh, 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 Kamara from Sierra Leone, uh, because we understand that we are in the kingdom of God. And when we are in the kingdom of God, all else has to bow down. There's no other allegiance greater than that which is the kingdom of God. Not your politics, uh, not, not the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, not the Independent Party, not the Nobody Party. Is that a party? I don't know. The kingdom of God, everything submits to the kingdom of God. Uh, that's why we can have a congregation where there are members who are, where there's black people who are Republicans, who vote Republican. There are white people who vote Democratic. There are some of us who vote independent, but none of that, none of that causes us to have friction with one another. Show me a congregation where men and women sit together and don't judge each other. Show me a congregation where the wealthy and where welfare sit right next to each other and don't pass judgment. Show me a congregation where a brother with tattoos can sit next to a grandmama with her big Bible and they both say, I love you in Jesus name. Show me a church where an ex-convict can sit next to an honor roll student and they both embrace one another. Show me a church where a white sister can have lunch with a black sister and say, I don't fully understand what it's like to walk in your shoes, but I care. Show me a church of Christ where a married Hispanic woman can sit with a divorced white woman and say, I'm here for you. Show me a middle class white man telling a middle class black man, now I see. I can't fully understand, but I care about your experiences. Uh, show me people who vote as Republicans, Democrats, and independents serving in the kingdom of God together, and neither one of them judge the other. That, that, that's a way to know the Holy Spirit is present because the Holy Spirit dissolves our divisions. The text in Ephesians 2 says, verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinance, so as to create in himself one new man. That's what we are as the church, one new being. From the two, thus making peace. Listen, I, I'm not surprised that our society is at odds with one another. The peace that God talks about is supposed to emulate from, exude from the church. So I'm surprised, I'm bothered when the church of Christ, when the church you read about in your Bible, when these who profess Christianity have division or are not at peace when we put our biases ahead of the principles and the tenets of Christianity. Verse 16, Ephesians 2, 
and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body. Reconciliation takes place in the body of Christ through the cross, thereby, thereby putting to death the enmity. Verse 17, and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and, and foreigners, but fellow, listen to me, Black people and white people and Hispanic people. Listen to me, uh, people who are on welfare. Listen to me, those of you who are, are well-to-do. Uh, we are now fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. What does this mean? When you see all these different people from different backgrounds coming together, it means that we understand that we are spirits, we have souls, we live in this body. It means that we are members of the body of Christ. We are fellow citizens. We're no longer at war with each other. We're no longer in enmity with each other, but we can be at peace. So I asked you earlier, what does your daily life look like? Homogeneity is not synonymous to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is present, you see what we see in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 12. We see 15, 16 different people from people groups coming together under the banner of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not naive. Uh, I've been black almost 48 years. Uh, so I understand that just because we're in the kingdom of God doesn't mean that I understand what my white brothers feel all the time. And I realize they don't understand what I feel all the time. But because we're in the kingdom together, we care. We care enough to, to talk about it, to ask, to get a better understanding. Uh, just because we worship together uh, don't mean we're on the same page about everything, but we have peace, we have harmony, and nothing should be able to divide us. We are striving, we are endeavoring to keep the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. Yeah, the church, I'm telling you, every Christian, you ought to make a difference. Um, Black Lives Matter is, Matter is gonna do certain things. Democrats gonna do certain things. Uh, the LULAC is gonna do certain things. The Republican party is gonna do certain things. But the church, Christians, you have the responsibility. We have the responsibility to lead the way. In your daily lives, each one, win one. It starts with you. It starts with me as members of the body of Christ. And listen, when, once you capture the understanding that you are a threefold spiritual being, you're not just a black person. You're not just a white person. You don't just have a brown house, but you are a spirit. Your spirit must be born again. Uh, your soul needs to be saved. And in the end, your body will be saved. So where are you? Where are you? I'm telling you, there's, there's peace in the kingdom. There's unity in the kingdom. We want to encourage you, if you are not a member of the body of Christ, to become one as soon as you possibly can. We read in the text of Ephesians 2 that uh, now that you're in Christ Jesus, uh, you are brought, to, brought near to God. You get into Christ Jesus by being baptized for the remission of your sins. That's what the Bible teaches in Galatians chapter 2, verse 27, that we put on Christ in baptism. Uh, that will put you into Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 and following shows you that when we are baptized, we're baptized into Christ. Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 4, when we are buried 
uh, when we die to our sins, we are buried in that watery grave of baptism. We rise again to walk in the newness of life. That puts us into Christ Jesus. Maybe you need to do that today. And then begin to uh, continue to uh, stay with the apostles' doctrine and, and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We want to give you that opportunity. We want to give you that opportunity to say, you know what? It's my time. It's my time to give my life to Jesus and be baptized. There is some information on the screen. That information is, is designed for you to uh, call in or text in or email in your prayer request. And we'll pray with you and pray for you. Now, for those of you who are members of the body of Christ, those of you who are Christians, listen, how are you living your daily life? Are you communicating and going through life, dealing with people based on the flesh? Are you being unfair to people based on flesh? And listen, I, I know you've been hurt. We all have been hurt in some shape, form, or fashion. I know you've been hurt, but there's healing in the body of Christ. There's healing when you begin to see yourself as a spirit who has a soul who lives in the body. When you begin to see your fellow, fellow neighbor as someone who is a spirit, their spirit may be hurt just like yours hurt. They have a soul that needs healing, that needs purifying. Uh, and we can communicate with them based on, uh, communicate with them as a, as a human being here on this earth. We are spirits, we have souls, we live in this body. If you have not been uh, communicating with people based on that understanding, Listen, what you can do is just repent. Just, just repent means make a change, a change way of thinking. I understand some of this might be a little new, but stay with us. Stay with us, and we'll try to help you with that. Uh, but if you know right now you need to repent, utilize the information on the screen. Repent to God. Ask us to pray with you and pray for you. We're going to sing a song right now that's designed to just give you a moment Send in your prayer requests. Give you a moment to reflect on what it is you need to do. Those who are on Facebook Live will, will do the same for you. Send your prayer request in right now as we sing a song of encouragement. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy We'll pray with you and pray for you. Say six feet apart. Do you have um, your email? Put it. Okay. Yeah. Just well, you can do it right here. Be in the pulpit. That's, that's what a mic is. And waiting not to rid my soul of one dark light. To thee, whose blood can cleanse each spot of land of God, I come. I Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, participate in this worship service and listen to God's word. And um, at this time, we were reminded in James chapter five, verse 16, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another, pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That text says, confess your faults 
one to another. That's not something that people readily do. So this is one of those kind of lessons where people don't readily say, you know what, I've been unfair to other people. Uh, but I want to beseech you by the mercies of the living God. If in fact the Holy Spirit is pricking you right now, if in fact you realize that truly you have not been fair, do what the Bible teaches. He, he, he said, the book says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our faults, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's if we confess our faults. But if you choose to try to hide or cover your sins, there is no forgiveness for you. So don't play with this. Uh, I, I know you believe that you're a mature Christian, so deal with this in a mature fashion. When you realize that you are short in the area, uh, repent, ask God to strengthen you and build you up. And so we give you an opportunity to do that. There's, there may be some who have come, have one of our elders here, Brother uh, Anthony Williams, uh, one of our elders at this congregation. Brother Williams, do you have anyone who responded? I do have one invitation. By the way, what outstanding job by Brother Ian Nickerson. I mean, timely, um, appropriate for this occasion, um, but applicable for the times that we live in. And so we have a custom here, our congregation, we give a love deposit that provides an affirmation when someone does things right. Let's give Brother Nickerson a love deposit. Appreciate that. We do have one response. I think it's from Sister Brenda Renfro, and it's a prayer of thanksgiving. A prayer of thanksgiving for having my seventh great grandchild hmm. uh, about a month ago. And so we join in and celebration of prayer of thanksgiving with Sister Renfro. Uh, that's all that I have uh, in the email. Are there others that we can set aside and pray for at this time? Uh, there is another that's coming in. Can you read it to me? Uh, Sister Tawana Neal, God is using her and preparing her as she uh, moves further towards her purpose. Uh, and she's asking for prayer as she prepares to take certain exams uh, that will propel her further into that purpose. So let's keep Sister Tawana Neal in our prayers. Uh, Brother uh, Williams, I want to, there was, there was a question, somewhat of a question that came in. I want to respond to this. Uh, there was a question that sent in. It says, so, so one doesn't have the Holy Spirit if they are racist? What a question. Does one have the Holy Spirit if they are racist? Can one be racist and not really be aware of it? I'm reminded of the Apostle Peter, who was a disciple of Jesus Christ, who, who preached this first sermon here in Acts 2. Uh, yet in his soul, although his spirit had been born again, he had some beliefs, some values, particular attitudes in his soul that had not been converted. His soul had not been fully purified. It, it was, it's Peter who wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, I believe verse 22, the book says, seeing you have purified your souls, how? By obeying the truth. So there's a possibility that uh, your soul can continue to go through the process of being purified. There are some areas of our lives that still needs changing, right? Uh, so it's possible to be born again, but have some beliefs, some values and attitudes that's contrary to the word of God. Peter in Acts chapter 10, he had to deal with a racism problem. Uh, God had to work with him and help him to see that what I have called clean, and, and Peter thought he was talking about some, some chicken and some, uh, well, not chicken. Uh, he thought he was talking about some meat, uh, but 
he was actually talking about the Gentile people, right? Who the Jews thought of as unclean. In that vision of Acts chapter 10, God worked with Peter so that Peter then could go and teach the house of Cornelius, who was a Gentile. Peter had a, had a racism problem. Some of you have racism problems. Uh, and if you're not racist, some of us are, are, are prejudiced or we discriminate against other people because of the color of their skin. Uh, so what's happening is a person, to answer this question more succinctly, a person might not be under the authority of the Holy Spirit in their life. And this is what happens. Even Christians can get to a point to where they're not under the authority of the Holy Spirit in their lives and they do not obey what the Holy Spirit is telling them. Here, here again, 1 Peter, 20, 1 Peter 1, 22. Check me, make sure I'm saying that, that I got that text right. Uh, if it's not 1 Peter, 2 Peter. Seeing you have been born again, not of corruptible, excuse me, seeing you have purified your souls by obeying the truth. Every time I obey the truth, it purifies my soul. So here's Peter. God is telling him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter says, Lord, not so. We don't eat anything that's unclean. God says again, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Lord, not so. We don't kill anything, eat anything that's unclean. Rise, Peter. So Peter is getting this word. Peter hadn't obeyed it yet. But once he obeyed it after that third admonition, he obeys it, goes down into Cornelius' house and began to share the gospel with people who heretofore he kind of shunned. The more we obey God's word, to love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. The more we do God, what God's word tells us to do, um, to love our brother like we love God, right? The more we do what the Bible says do, the more we can purify our own souls, even that racist tendencies that we might have in our own being. Am I right on the text? First Peter chapter one, verse 22. First Peter chapter one, verse 22. So uh, a person can have issues with other people group, uh, but God can work on that individual just like he worked on Peter, just like he worked on those Jews in the first century, uh, just like he worked on some of us black folks here at Mendy Street Church of Christ, because we were not always about teaching everybody. You remember we used to, when we have gospel meetings, we would go around the white person and go to the black person and invite them to the gospel meeting. I, I said it because you do the same thing. Yeah, I used to, you have your, your meetings come, come up and a, a special speaker. You don't invite me, but you invite the, the white person who looks like you. Or when you get ready to change memberships, you don't even consider a church like Mender Street. Oh my goodness, I'm going too far. Uh, you don't consider Mender Street because they have black people in here or Hispanic people in here. And you're just looking for a church that's all white. I'm talking about Abilene. Where it makes us almost feel like we're invisible if we didn't know that we were God's people with purpose. Uh, God is doing a great thing at the ministry of Church of Christ. So I hope, I hope that it helps that individual who asked the question about, about the Holy Spirit and, and someone having, uh, being racist. Uh, we wanna take a moment now to just pause and pray for Sister Renfro, pray for this individual and just however God leads you, uh, Brother Williams. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful Thank you. that you are indeed our Father. And we pause at this time and we say our prayer of agreement with the petition brought forth by Sister Renfro and the opportunity to provide a prayer thanksgiving for a brand new gift um, that you have provided. I also want to pray for an individual that uh, provokes thought, that allows us to examine how we see each other. Our prayer, uh, our hope, the expectation is that we can get beyond the tabernacle, that we can see those around us in a way that you see us, and that we may be an example, uh, that we may embrace the concept, uh, the reality, that we really are spirits, that we have souls, and that we live in this body. We want to be able to submit ourselves to that truth and make our very unique make contribution sure in the kingdom. 
So we pray for this congregation that we can continue to study, to be aware, and then execute the things you have for us. We pray for our city, um, that we can do things in a way that exhibit the reality that we all are bound together by the blood of Christ. We pray for this state and for our country that we may do the same. That even in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of protest, in the midst of friction and division, that we can focus on the very thing that unites us all. That is your love and the sacrifice of your son. And so in this, we pray all these things and we do so in a bold way in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, church, uh, there is one other prayer request that uh, we overlooked. I want to make sure that we uh, honor this prayer request. We have them on their own Zoom online. And this is Brother and Sister Peridon, who has a prayer request. Brother and Sister Peridon, go right ahead. So um, our prayers is that we pray for um, wisdom. We're praying for um, strength, um, praying for, uh, or thanking God for the many blessings that he's given us. And um, um, we're also wanting to share some good news as well. Good news. Okay. So the good news is we're pregnant. <laughs> Well, Amen. we're pregnant with Amen. twins. But we're pregnant, oh, with, pregnant twins. with twins. Pregnant with twins. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 So we're just asking prayers for a healthy pregnancy, mm -hmm. for just us, you know, staying spiritual, staying um, just emotionally ready for this new blessing. Yes. Um, yes. And just hus as husband and wife, just being ready for this. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Paradins have a great story uh, that, that lies behind them. And we rejoice with you all uh, in this good news. Uh, Amen. Not only having one child, but having two. Having two. two. Uh, yeah. Blessed with two child and two, two children. And, you know, if you happen to have a boy and a girl, I'm just telling you, Ian and Iana is like a cool name. Yeah. Those are cool. <laughs> those are cool. That would be cool twin names. Really? Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> just, I think like that. Brother Ramel said, we're probably going to have a COVID or COVIDia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Like, Amen. Today. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, please keep this, keep this couple in your prayers as we go forward. Now, let me say a special prayer for them right now. Father God in heaven, we're so thankful for the holy state of matrimony. Uh, we know that uh, we know how you have intended for it to be. Uh, you said in your word that a man should leave mother and father, cleave to his wife and the twain become one flesh. And from that union um, should come offsprings, uh, if it so be your will. So, Father, we're thankful now for this, this pregnancy and the, uh, the hope of new life. We just ask you to bless uh, Brother Peridin, Sister Peridin, with wisdom, with health and strength. Uh, father, and with two children in diapers at the same time, bless them with finances as well. Uh, we pray that we will be a good congregation that will be uh, supportive uh, to them during these times. Uh, thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm before you this morning with the communion. And I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and following. And I'll be reading from the ESV version. And it says, For I have received of the Lord that I, which I also delivered to you, 
that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time just thanking you once again, giving us an opportunity to commune with you. We thank you, Father, for loving us in such a way that you sent your son to come uh, sacrifice and die on the cross for us so that we may have an opportunity at eternal life. We ask, Father, that you be with each and every person that decides to take the communion at this time, that they have examined themselves and that they will participate in the communion in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. We thank you, Father, for the bread, which represents the broken body. We thank you, Father, for the cup, which represents the shed blood. And as we take part of these emblems, Father, give us the strength, the wisdom, and guidance to continue to serve you in a manner that does so that where others may say, what must I do to be saved? We offer this prayer in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. I really love the Lord. Yes, I really love the Lord. You don't know, you don't know what's done for me. Yes, he gave me the victory. Yes, and that's why I love him. I love him. Oh, I really love the We're now at a portion of our service where we are instructed to give back to God as he has blessed us. In 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and following, the heading on this particular uh, text says, it is good to give as much as you can. And then it goes into verse 6 by saying, remember this, if a farmer plants only a few seeds, he would not get much of a result. But if he plants plenty of seeds, he will get a big harvest. Each of you should think carefully and then decide how much you can give. Then you would not be sad to give that money. Nobody has made you give it. God loves someone who is happy to give to other people. Since God loves you, he is able to give you more than you need. You will always have every good thing that you need for yourselves and you will have enough to do many good things to help other people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the jobs you've given us, for the income you give us, for the prosperity that you continue to provide for us so that we may do those things here on earth that allow us to have uh, a prosperous life. We thank you for the attitude that you've also placed within us that we give back to you a portion of our earnings in a manner that is pleasing to you. We ask, Father, that you bless those hands that are have oversight of these funds, guide these men in a way that will help them to continue to look for ways to expand the borders of the kingdom that, we, that others may see your good works through us. And we just ask that you give those men the wisdom to do those things pleasingly and acceptable in your sight. We thank you, Father, again for this time. We thank you for the provision you continue, continue to give to us. And we offer this prayer in your son Jesus' name, amen.
And that 